Today, I want to present our ongoing work on automatic testing of our library Apaka. Um, we started with a simple example, but now it becomes a really complicated framework because we try to solve several problems. And today, I want to give you a short overview of what we're doing. Maybe you get some ideas what you can do for your project. And also, I want to um, advertise a little bit or HDR cloud because if you become more and more members of the users of the cloud uh, of the CI cloud, hopefully we get more um, help from the uh, from the center and so on at this work. So let's start. Um, I wrote it in the description, so I expect you are familiar with CI and basics. Nevertheless, I want to give a short introduction in C uh, using CI for continuous uh, testing your library. So first, what you require is a repository. In our case, we use a Git repository for uh, software management. And the software projects need some kinds of tests. And actually, the automatic tests. And actually, the automatic test has only to fulfill two requirements. You need to execute it. And it needs to return a status code. And the status code means zero. Every test is passing. And if it's not zero, some test crashes for some reasons. And so I show, so it means really you can do test nearly everything. You can compile a test executable like in C++. You can run a test script like Python or do something fancy like building your own web service, execute it, and ping it. To, um, to see if it's running. So you are totally free to describe the tests. Um, for Alpaca, we do the first one. So we really, um, we compile our test executables. The code uh, tests are written with catch two. It's a test framework and we execute it. And in practice, our Excel projects looks like this. So um, not this mouse. So we have our sources with functionality, a main function, and so on. And we have an extra test executable. The test executable is compiled if we set our builds um, or see my command example with building uh, testing is equals one. And then it builds also the tests and we run ctest. And if ctest is returning a zero, everything is fine. And our CI passes and says, yes, it's great. Or if a test failed, it returns a one or something else, and we get this red cross in our on GitHub and see, oh, something is going wrong. So that's the basics. Now about the HDR CI or HDR CI is using GitLab CI runners. So you can see this integrated in, in GitLab projects, and you use um Actually, you write the same job descriptions like the public runners, but we have also our special hardware and we can use our dedicated HDDR CI pipeline. We are using tags. For example, we have uh, x86 and CPU only or NVIDIA GPU, and therefore we can use our special run uh, or dedicated runners. So we have a really big x86 AMD EPIC system, which provides a lot of CPU power and RAM for the jobs. We have some special runners, one with a NVIDIA graphic cards, one with a AMD graphic cards, a power system with test, uh, two tests of P100 and an RM system. And usually if you are running on free resources, you have something like an x86 CPU, two cores, four gigabytes of RAM, and it's pretty slow. Yeah, and why we have the CI? So the first reason is pretty simple. We need to test on GPUs. Because Alpaca requires GPU support, you will see it on a, one of the next slides. So this is the major reason. But we had also the problem in the past that we are running out of a free CI content. So it means that at this time it was Travis, and we could run ten jobs in parallel and only so many CI hours per day. And at some point, if we did too much pull request on a day, or CI was stopped working, and we had to wait for the next day. And also, and special for CPU runner, they are much faster than the usual free runners on the uh, free internet. And this helps a lot, a lot if you want to do testing. 
Okay, but Apaka is laying on uh, GitHub and how we want to, uh, how we can use GitLab CI. So, oh, first, when we do testing before we cover it. So we test each pull request. So it means you can open your pull request, push your code, and you see a small badge, and the badge is saying, okay, the uh, test passes or not. And we do it in each pull request because we want to detect bugs much early as possible, because it's much easier to debug immediately debugs than collect it uh, more and more. And then you want to do a release and you find out, okay, your software is broken and yeah, let's fix this bug or no, and uh, other bug is appearing and then you get totally crazy and yeah, that's not good. So how we can use the CI runner on GitHub. So a direct connection is not possible. You cannot write in your GitHub actions. Um, I want to use this GitLab CI runner. So we need at least a step over GitLab. And actually, in or HCDR GitLab, you can use the GitLab CI runner. And actually, this would be that's actually a good idea to say, okay, we mirror or GitHub to GitLab. And then GitLab is executing the jobs for us and send back the report. And it's nearly possible, but not at the HDDR GitLab because this is a premium feature to mirror GitHub repositories to GitLab and get feedback back. And we have only the free based version. But we can also register our GitLab CI runner on GitLab.com. And on GitLab.com, the HDDR code group has premium uh, support. This is sponsored by GitLab because we are using it only for open source projects. And so we get a project thanks to Tobias Sister at this point, which organized this each year. And yeah, on the right side, you see how it now our structure is working. So we pushing some code on GitHub. A bot automatically mirror the uh, content to GitLab. Yeah, the GitLab YAML CI is executed where the jobs is described and execute the jobs on the runner and send back the feedback on GitHub and how it looks in. Oh, and before I show how it looks in practice, here is the a small um, description how you can set up your project for mirroring. So actually, you need to be a member of the HCDR group or subgroup or other premium group. No, you need to be a member of the HADR group because otherwise, or a subgroup because otherwise the CI runners are not available. Then you can create a new project on gitlab.com. Um, on the right top corner, you see run CI, CD for external repositories, click on this, enter your uh, personal GitHub token. It's described, uh, described in the full tutorial which uh, permissions are required. Yeah, and then select simply the repository what you want to mirror. And it is, it's, you can set up in two minutes if you're familiar with this. And this is how it looks like if you do a pull request. So in Apaka, we, at the moment, we mixed um, GitHub Actions. So there's a GitHub Action um, job. And here you see the GitLab CI jobs. And in this case, every job is passed. So we have a green check mark. If some bot, somebody would uh, fail, you can click and you see a red cross mark. And if you click on the detail link, you will uh, redirect to um, GitLab CI, and you see your pipeline. And you see all the past uh, several jobs in the pipeline. And you can click on a job, and then uh, you see what fail, uh, what was the failure. One question. Yes. Uh, did I understand it correctly that even if you self-host GitLab, there are still premium features? Yes. So even I was under the impression that GitLab is open source, but even though you're not using it as, as a service, there is still... Yeah, you have uh, different tiers. So you have two premium tiers. And either you host it by yourself or you are at gitlab.com, you are use the basic version, and you have to pay extra money to get additional tiers with additional features. And GitLab is providing on gitlab.com a special program for open source projects where you get um, the premium status for your group for free. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks for the question. Back to the topic. So now I already talked about Apaka. So it's 
um, that you understand what our problem is, I need to give a small introduction in Alpaca, what Alpaca is actually doing. So Alpaca is a C++ header only library for extracting accelerator development. Accelerators means different processor types like CPUs, GPUs, or FPGAs with um, uh, using through various SDKs. And so you write only one time the code and you can execute um, this um, code on different Excel processors. For example, you can execute this code on a CPU or on a GPU. So it only depends what compile flex you set. And this is a problem for testing for us because now we are depending on various um, vendor SDKs. For example, at the moment we support three GPU vendors, it's NVIDIA, it's AMD, and it's Intel. And for NVIDIA GPUs, we need the CUDA SDK. For AMD, we need the HIP SDK. For Intel, we use uh, the SIGL and the one API the SDK. And we have also other dependencies like CMake and Boost. And this caused a lot of work to test. So let's test Alpaca. I already started, so we have the uh, various test parameters. Um, for Alpaca in special, we have two compilers because um, Alpaca was designed with CUDA in mind. And so it means if you run a GPU application, you have typically a host and a device side. The host side is the CPU side, uh, is running on the CPU, and the device side is running on a GPU. And the CPU is doing the usual stuff what your application, normal application is also doing, and is controlling the GPU sends data to the GPU and also uh, application and the, or the program code and the GPU is executing the code and send you back the device, uh, the results. But therefore you need two compilers because the CPU and the GPU has different architectures and you need to compile your source code with two different compilers. And for example, for NVIDIA, you need the MVCC compiler for device side um, to compile the code for the media GPU, and on the host side, you need a normal C++ compiler like GC, Clang, MSVC um, to compile your x86 code or RM code and so on. And therefore, you have already the combination of host and device compiler. The device compiler can be also the Clang or the GCC if you're only running on host. Uh, if you're running on CPU, then host and device becomes the same, but this is just a detail. So first two parameters, host compiler and device compiler. Then we have our uh, CMake version for building. This is also important because, and especially if you support CUDA or HIP and so on, the um, support improves with in newer versions. So in old versions, sometimes you need to work around, and therefore you have to test all CMake versions. We are depend on Boost just a small dependency, but we depend on it. Uh, we are running on different operation systems, Linux, Mac OS, and Windows. Uh, at the moment, we support C++ 17, also 20, and hopefully soon 23. Or let's say at least raise the minimum standard to C++ 20. We test different build types like release and debug, and we have our Alpaca backends. Um, this is something special for Alpaca. If you, uh, you can enable several backends and the backends means um, you can run your code on a specific um, processor. This means you can enable a CPU backend and a GPU backend, and then it means you can execute the same code depending on the parameter on the CPU or on the GPU and also in parallel. So this is also a big combinatoric. Yeah, and a small example. Oh, on keyboard. So let's say we want to test only the CUDA backend alone. We have already the combination we can for, use for the host, at least four GTD versions, six Clang version, 10 CUDA SDK versions, four CMake version, then Boost version. This means we have 2,800 combinations. Each job run in the best case six minutes. So it means a total run serial will take 280 hours. We could, in theory, run about 30 jobs in parallel, so a pipeline would run at least nine, point, nine and a half hour. But that's a lot of simplifications. So I already mentioned it. We have also MSVC compiler. Oh, just a side note, 
at the moment the, um, the GitLab CI is only working with Linux. So this is also the reason why we do uh, GitHub work actions, uh, GitHub actions, because we need to test their or Mac on Windows versions. But back to the main topic. So it means uh, I don't test all host compilers. I ignore the operation system, C++ standards, build types, also um, other backends which we can enable. We can also use Clang as device compiler and so on. This means, um, and this is only for CUDA, we can also test GC and Clang as host uh, the CPU backends and the HIP backends and Intel backends. So it means we get more than more than over 10,000 combinations and more. So it means our runtime will take in the best, uh, best case days. And I also ignore that we cannot run uh, all jobs on all runners because there are some special. So you see, it's not possible to test all combinations. And especially you want to do a, uh, you want to do a PR and you want to get some feedback if your code is also running on an AMD CPU, you don't want to uh, wait four or five days <laughs> to get a result. So main goal of our CI is we need to reduce the CI total runtime. And we have some points where we can reduce the time. Uh, time. So we can reduce the runtime of each test job. We can reduce the number of jobs and we can improve the utilization of OCI because I already told it the best case would utilize 30 runners. It's not possible, but we can try to achieve this. And other goals are most um, also important as test coverage. So if you want, so a full matrix test is not possible, but we want to keep the best coverage as possible. And our test system needs to maintainable, maintainable because we have a a big fluctuation of uh, developers, so new people get in, old people get out, and everyone has to understand how a CI works, in, at least in the basics. And the CI needs to be extensible, because at the moment, I believe we have at least two open PRs to test CUDA 12.1 and HIP 4.5, and so this needs also be integrated and tested. And at some point, it should be also verifiable. So let's say, OK, do we really test CUDA 11.8, or do we miss to write the test? Yeah. And there are some restriction and competitions where we do it. So uh, we have shared res uh, CI resources. This means there are 30 runners for Alpaca, and Picon GPU, and Vicuña, and other projects that use the CI. So we need to use it in a fair way. We have only a less special runners. This means we have only one runner with AMD GPU and one with the uh, NVIDIA GPU, but we have a lot of uh, CPU resources. We have the problem with internet bandwidth. So for example, the CUDA SDK, a download of the CUDA SDK takes one gigabyte. So this takes some time because we are not directed direct connected via fiber to the NVIDIA servers to download it with a gigabyte per second. We have less internet bandwidth. And most important, developer hours. So actually, each developer of Alpaca wants to introduce new features or maybe fix bugs, but nobody wants to spend time with the CI. It's simply necessary, but it's not the major job. OK, and our major solution for this is a job generator, because a job generator allows us to generate dynamically jobs. And we can fill in parameters and algorithm to describe how we want to job, generate jobs. And a job generator itself is simply application. It's fully independent of the program language. Or, for example, our job generator is written in Python because C++ fits not so well for this uh, problem. Uh, for an uh, upcoming Julia project, we want to use Julia because the project itself is written in Julia, and so we need only one language. But you can do everything. You can also code it in assembler if you want. It's crazy, but you can do it. And actually, the job, uh, job generator is nothing doing than generating a job YAML, which um, contains the GitLab CI job YAML. So, um, a short on the example. 
So this is the job generator to which mouse, this one. This is uh, actually the job generator to run the, oh, this is our GitLab CI YAML, which is static and executable at the first time. And this runs our generator Python script. And the generator Python script generates a child YAML. And the child YAML has actually a similar, a uh, similar structure like this summer. So it means it has also stages, it has a chip, it generates uh, jobs like generate or run child. So maybe job one, two, three, describe which image and which script is executed. And this is what actually the job generator is doing. And this code, this uh, initial gets, uh, GitLab CI YAML, is more or less predefined because it says there are two jobs. The first is generate the YAML and then stores as artifact. This means this YAML is um, available over several jobs. And then a second job is taking this uh, job YAML and run it in a child pipeline. And you can imagine the child pipeline like the original pipeline. It takes this YAML, read it, and construct the jobs. And this is how the job generator is working. And so it looks in practice. So first you see our generate job. And in this case, our C, uh, YAML contains two, it uh, generates YAML code for two child pipelines. The ch this is the trigger job. And then you have all the following up jobs. And if you expand one, you see a big amount of several jobs for uh, GitHub, uh, for Alpaca, testing Alpaca. That's only the first page. Okay, and this is the basic of a job generator. So I already mentioned the problem. If you do a full, combina hey, full combination of all possible parameters, we would never, uh, we take too much time to uh, make a useful testing approach. Therefore, we have a solution and it's called pairwise testing. And the major idea of pairwise testing is create a more um, clever test matrix. And yeah, the agreement is actually pretty simple. You put in, you pass test parameters with several uh, parameters. For example, for this example, we use the host compiler, it's GC, Clang, or something like this, a device compiler like MVCC, and a boost version. And then the agreement is starting more or less with a full combination matrix, or it's, it tries to traverse a full transformation matrix. But it has a own rule, and pairwise means a combination of two values should appear in. Uh, it checks if the values of two parameters appears at least one time in one of the combinations, and in the best case, only one time. So it means here we have the pairs, for example, GC10 with NVCC11. And the pair GC10 with boost 878, and the pair MVCC11 with 178. And on the next slide, we have GC, the pair N, GCC10 with MVCC111, and GCC1 with 1179. And let's say the algorithm checks the next combination. It's GC with MVCC112. We have not this combination. But we have GC10 with GC1178. And we recognized, oh, we already had this in the first combination. So we should avoid this combination because now we have this pair two times. So let's uh, remove it and try other combination. And now we replace 78 with 180 and we have a new combination. And so the idea is you test at least each combination of two test uh, parameter values in each job. And depending on the amount of your parameters, at some point it's required, sometimes it's required that you test uh, one combination two times. For example, in this example, if you had only the boost version 7, 8, and 9, at some point we have to test it twice with GC10 if we have not more boost version. And this is the reason why some Sometimes more jobs can uh, of course, or combination can of course. So this is the basic idea. And it, it reduces our jobs a lot of. I started with example with 2,800 combination. At the moment, we, we use this 
So OCI is not fully transistor, but at a, uh, transformed to the new system. At the moment, we test only HIP and all CUDA combinations, and we have only 178 jobs. So this reduces the test amount a lot of. And you can give also uh, self-defined rules in the test uh, testing and the generator to say, okay, specific combinations are not allowed in general. For example, I already mentioned we test the C++ standard, and we have this rule: if CUDA is um, CUDA SDK as a version um, older than 12, C++ is not allowed because simply it does not support C++. It would cause a compilation error, which we cannot fix, and so therefore we don't need to test it because we know it's it will become wrong and it's not fixable. Yeah, and you can define more and more so some uh, such rules. I'll show you an example later. Yeah, and we share our combinate our set of rules in the extra library because this uh, this rules also affects all um, libraries which are basing on Alpaca. For example, the Vicuña library, which implements algorithm for Alpaca, or also Pico GPU, which is using um, Alpaca. It has also the same problem that you cannot see use C family together with the CUDA 11 SDK. Yeah. And here's the link also to our um, to the library which we use for the uh, testing. And there's also interesting um, practical observation. Um, if you add more job parameters and more uh, values to each job parameter, the total number of jobs uh, increases not so much at some point. And the reason is because I told you in the example at the beginning, um, you have not enough possible combinations. So you have to um, do some combination twice or more. And if you get more values, you have more uh, place to set in all your combination. And therefore, this is a great benefit of this job generator. We saw it when adding in the last version. So we begin with 90 jobs, and now we have 190 hip jobs, and now we have 170 with several CUDA combinations. Okay, now we have the basics for a, for a Packard job generator. And or a Packard job generator is uh, fitted with a lot of experience originally for Figo and GPU because we had already dealt with problem with combinations, also in Alpaca itself. And therefore, we created a multi-layer design for the generator. So this allows us to reuse components, components for Pigon GPU, Alpaca, Vicuña, maybe also Kabla in the future, and allows us to, um, to specialize for the specific projects. And it makes much easier to maintain it because you have really clear uh, separations between the layers and you can describe properties at that point, how the data structure looks like, but what um, modifications you can do here, and so on. Yeah, and in this graphic, you see all seven layers which we have, and you see the blue one is from the Apaka Jobs Lab uh, library. So you can, so they already exist. You can use it without modification. We have the orange layers which are fully dependent on the uh, projects, and we have some layers which provides some skeleton for you, and you need to adjust some points. And I don't want to get too much in detail each one, but I take one layer, and this is the general job matrix layer, and it's actually doing our algorithm, which I already explained, pairwise testing, and here you see our set of rules, and the set of rules also um, it's also uh, split it in layers from a really generic or really um, cross-grained filter rules until really fine-grained filter rules. So the first one is something like so general compiler filter means you cannot use the MVC C as host compiler because the MVC compiler cannot generate x86 code. It can only generate CUDA code, uh, code for the NVIDIA GPUs. You have more fine-grained code. Uh, rules like um, Lang 4 is not working with CUDA 12, MVCC 12, and so on. And in the end, you have a layer for project dependent filters. For example, I already mentioned Vicuña, which is basing on Alpaca. 
And there I have some filter rules, which is saying, okay, if I test the new CUDA SDK version, which is uh, supported in Apaga 9, it's fine. But if I want to use CUDA SDK, I need to use Apaga 09. If I have 08, it's not working because Apaga 08 does not support CUDA 12. I need to use it. A newer version, and this can and this I can implement in our own filter rules. Okay, so this is how we reduce the number of jobs. And now let's um, reduce the uh, the runtime of a single job. And therefore, we use pre-built containers. And to understand what pre-built containers are doing, I explain how it's normally working if you do a CI job. Normally, you select uh, some image, um, most of the time from uh, Docker Hub, and it's more or less a vanilla OS image, something like classical Ubuntu 24, and then you prepare it for your test. So you install CMake, Boost, GCC, and so on, um, and you're doing this each job. And actually, this is fine because APT is pretty fast. It has pre-compiled binaries. Maybe if your package becomes a bit like CUDA, it takes some time, but more or less, it's fine. But at some time, you get a problem. And this is the point where you want to install latest software. And this is from the Ubuntu 22.4. This shows me the latest available boost version is 1.74. And Alpaca supports, minimum support is 1.74, and it's up to 1.80. So it means we, or how we get the newer version. And sometimes you have luck and you can add a PPA and sometimes you have no luck and then you need to compile it from source. So get clone, compiling, and this takes time. Each test job. So compiling each boost version takes maybe, in the best case, three minutes. And I showed you at the beginning, all test jobs take six minutes. So it means it increases the compile time 50% only if you compile boost in container. So this is not a real solution. And it makes also hard if you want to use, uh, reproduce the test on a local system, because sometimes you want to start the container on your local system and show in each detail why the job is crashing on the CI. So the CI is normally not interactive, and this is makes hard to debug, therefore you want to run it locally, and therefore it's also not well uh, fitting if you need to first compile the dependencies before you can compile your uh, normal project. And therefore, we build pre-compiled, uh, pre-built containers. This means we have our base image, in our case it's Ubuntu 24, and we compile all um, dependencies in the container. And if you pull the container, all dependencies are already available. So it means there is CMake and Boost, Docker, Puder, and so on. It depends a little bit because we have no big uh, container on the one side to, uh, um, to reduce a little bit the time to pull the image. On the other side, it's also not possible to install all specific versions in parallel for the moment. For example, you cannot, it's pretty hard to install several CUDA versions in parallel if you need, don't need a really big package manager like spec. Um, but yeah, if you install a FIP, and therefore we have this layer structure. So we have a base layer with boost and CMake and then build up layers. And this has also the advantage is if you pull the CUDA 11.0 container, it pulls the base image and the CUDA 11.0 image. And if you want to pull CUDA 12.0, it only pulls this layer again. So it increases really fast the um, pull time. And this is much faster than compiling all, all, all the stuff at the same time. And if you have a working Docker registry, it's nearly for free because your CI runner is caching all the images. So if you run 12 um, Apaca CI apps, um, each after one on the special runner, the base image is still there. So it can instantly start and it's really reduced the job runtime. And on your local system, it's also easy because you simply type docker run, clone your code inside and start compiling and building it. 
and we host all containers on uh, code on the HCDR CI uh, GitLab instance, not on Docker Hub, because on the one side we have a much faster network connection to the runners because they are stand side by side in our uh, in the computer center at Rosendorf. And we have also no restrictions for, of the registry, like size, how long you can keep images, and so on, and so on. Okay, but with brief build containers, we get a new problem. Because what happens if we want to add a new software version which is not inside the container? So let's say we want to add OS 1.81. So it means we need to add this version to the results of the container. We need to build this and uh, new containers, fix potential bugs if you add a new version, and then you need to release it on the registry that the CI job is building. So first we test it in the pull request, and so it's only temporary build containers, and if everything is fine, you merge it and do a release, and then the uh, CI of the Docker request uh, of our pre-built container repository building the containers and push it to the registry. And this is really a big cycle, and yeah, normally you are crying after the first try because you recognize, oh shit, I need to add CUDA 11, 12 also, and yeah, thanks, I need, I need to do it again. And therefore, we develop a solution. And this is a small package manager, or more or less a dependency check manager. It's called the HEC manager. And this is a small tool, which is also shipped with the containers. And therefore, you can ask if a version is uh, already installed, for example, boost. And if yes, you can export all paths. And everything is fine. It's pretty fast. If the version is not provided, you need to install it manually at, uh, uh, when you run the test job. Therefore, you need to provide a script. And Apaka there already exists, so we can simply add boost 810 and hopefully our script loads and then each uh, and test job if we test boost 181 so it's installed the uh, boost version so this jobs become slower but only this jobs not the other and at some point if you have some time so you so the workflow is you add a version to the Alpaca repository, check if everything is working, merge it. And then you open an issue and the Alpaca container image repository and say, yes, we need this. We need 1.81. And at some point, one developer can take this issue, implement it in a pull request, and simply merge it. And if you collect several versions, you can do a release. And there are new uh, containers uh, built and published. And then in the Alpaca repository, you can increase simply the container version to a new one. And your scripts automatically check it each time is boost 1.81 available. And if you have the new container version, it is um, available and it will use the pre-built version. And this run, uh, happens fully automatically. So you don't think about and it, uh, do I need a uh, do I need an add new boost version if I use a new container version? Yeah, this is pretty nice. Okay, the third optimization is wave scheduling. We need wave scheduling because I already mentioned it. We want to do a fair usage of the CI resources. So normally you say you need one wave or stage. So the terms in GitLab CI is stage. So it means we have 100. 70, we have 170 jobs. Please run all in parallel, and we have maybe 30 runners. So we start 30 jobs at the same time. And we do it in a packer, and somebody else wants to run a pull request in Picon GPU, and he is waiting because we are out of runners. All runners are running in a packer, and in the best case, it will, um, if one job is finished, it will take the next Apaga job, and so on and so on, until 170 jobs are finished. And the problem is, if one job is failing, all 20, less 29 jobs tries to uh, finish its time also. So this is also wasting resources. So it means if you run a PR, you allocate all resources and block it for a long time. And therefore, we introduce waves. So it means a wave is or stage, 
in all case contains only 20 jobs. So we only allocate 60% uh, of all results at one time. So all jobs are executed. And if one job is faster than all other, it will not immediately start the next job. So the runner becomes free and maybe can do a job for other project or other pull request. And if all jobs are fine in the, reposit, uh, in the wave, the next wave can start and so on and so on. And in this case, only when one job uh, fails in, the, in this wave, only 19 jobs tries to finish instead 29. And if you are clever, you can reorder your jobs and put in the first wave some jobs which try to uh, cover a lot of cases. So for example, with Kuna, we already did it. So let's test with a Kling, with a GCC, with a HIP version, with a MVCC. And in 90%, if you have a CUDA bug, it's not specific to a special version. It's only specific to CUDA itself. So it means one of the CUDA uh, runners will fail in the first wave and all other jobs will not start at, at this point. And you allocate only 10 resources and wasted nine runners with, or maybe eight with uh, uh, runners which tries to finish the stops. And also this wave scheduling has a lot of, has a lot to do with experience. So we tried around a little bit what are good parameters for the sizes and so on. Okay. And then we have a special problem of all HCD. RCI is hardware depending jobs. In the beginning, I already mentioned it. We have the special runners with GPUs, but we have only one GPU. And this GPU runner has this uh, Intercion Silver processor, which is actually an eight core processor, but you have two instances. So it means you have a quad core with two gigahertz. And yes. A pretty old, so from 2017. And if you compare the, uh, the job runtime of the NVIDIA GPU runner with the Epic runner, you see it takes three times more. And you can run 20 uh, CPU jobs in parallel on the Epic runner and only two on the GPU runner. So it means if you really compile all CUDA jobs on this uh, GPU runtime, uh, if you really compile and run all your CUDA jobs, on the GPU, NVIDIA GPU runner, it becomes the slowest path. So your CPU jobs will finish maybe after two hours and your, or one hour, and your GPU jobs takes six hours. And therefore, we had the solution to split all jobs and compile only and runtime jobs. So the difference is a compile only jobs does not execute the runtime test. It only compiles the codes and check if the um, if there is no compiling error. And then we implemented in our job generator a clever uh, a selection algorithm. And the selection uh, algorithm takes um, all CUDA jobs and hip jobs and uh, marks some of the um, jobs as runnable. And the conditions are we need at least, uh, we want to test for each major version the uh, the latest and the oldest minor version, and we test a re release and debug build of this. And so we have for CUDA, we have about 10 jobs, and this is fine. And also for HIP, and this is fully automatically, so it means at the moment we have CUDA 12 testing and also um, CUDA 11.0 until 11.8. So, and so this means this should be two, six jobs. And if we put add, uh, if we add 12 elf, the algorithm will all also recognize that the latest and oldest version for CUDA 12 is now different. So it will run CUDA 12.0 and 12.1. And if you add CUDA 12.2, it will not test 12.11 anymore because it's not the oldest or latest version. But the problem is, it reduced the test coverage because now we cannot find um, runtime problems in uh, some CUDA version in the middle. For example, uh, CUDA 11.3 uh, reduces some problems, but at the moment we cannot test it. And we already think about possible solution. One would be that we compile all the code on the CPU runner and move the builds to the GPU runner and execute it there but this requires a big storage 
for the build artifacts and also managing the lifetime is not so easy. For example, um, your pull request is doing uh, one job is failing and you are on vacations for two weeks, then you want to only rerun the maybe the runtime part of the job and your compiled artifacts are already deleted because the lifetime of the artifacts is only one week. Yeah. And the other possible solution would be by simply new hardware with GPU runners and faster CPUs that we can really execute all the jobs and don't care about this. Okay, and our last optimization, optimization is pretty simple but useful. It's a job filter. And the idea of job builder is only run the jobs which we need. So if I plan implemented a new feature, I need actually only test hit jobs at the beginning because I'm not expecting that the CUDA version is affected in this. So we have our CI filter. We added in the end of the git commit uh, git commit message this filter root. It's a regex um, on the job names. And yeah, then it's on in this case, it's only running MVCC and GCC jobs. And first you check it if everything is fine, you remove the filter rules and test everything, uh, all jobs. And if this is also fine, you can merge it. And here's only a small problem at the moment or CI or GitHub allows us at the moment also to merge pull requests, which uh, where the last commit has a filter rule. So it means you can define a filter rule which says don't test anything and you get a green check mark because the job uh, actually completed successful, but yeah, it tests nothing and your code is maybe broken. And we need a solution for this that we get um, that the CI is still, still blocking the merge. Okay, so in the end, this was a lot of stuff. So a small summary. So testing the Apaka library is a big amount of work. I think I told a lot of, we have a lot of test parameters, problems, and thinking about how we can do it fast. So actually, maybe if you are familiar with HPC, you see a lot of concept from the HPC. And yes, it's actually a HPC application. We have scheduling, we have caching, parallelization, heterogeneous environments. I use the same concept from HPC application for OCI. And this is at some point a little bit strange, but it makes also fun. Yeah. And yeah, our CI needs to be maintainable. Now it's much better than before, because before if we added a new version, we need to copy git YAML files and change some parameters and so on. Now we simply add a new version to our parameter set and hopefully everything is working out of the box. So I already did some pull requests where I simply add a new version for a new SDK and everything was fine and click merge. So it was only one change. Yeah, and it needs extendable or mention it, it's the same stuff. And the major question is, do I spend much, too much time with the CI? And I have to say definitely yes. Actually, I want to implement cool new C++ features, but can I save the time? No, because it takes so much. And if you try to test your code manually, and if you are not have the same hardware, if you um, depend on a remote system, you know the pain. It takes time and makes no fun. And after the third time you say, no, never ever, never wait. Okay. And yeah, these are the links to our projects. And this point, um, I want to open the discussion for questions and so on. And I want to advertise at the uh, last time for the Apaka CI, uh, Apaka CI, for the HCDR CI, because this share resources for the whole uh, institute. And if we have more users, this is much better, because then there is a reason to hire new people, which is maintaining the CI. At the moment, it's mainly uh, doing by Tobias Suster. He's doing a really great job, but he's only one person. And at some point, it's also hard to get new hardware. We are trying at uh, some time. So we do, and uh, we try to buy new GPU runners. And it's pretty hard because normally we have only money from bone-checked fundings and 
you cannot easily spend uh, money dedicated to the project to the CI because everyone can use the CI. So this is actually more something with the higher management uh, sections of the HDDR. So if you have more users, we have more reasons to uh, improve our CI and it's great. And if we have at some point more hardware in the CI, everyone is benefiting of this and sharing is not a problem. And if you're also interested in all uh, to you really do, uh, also using some concepts which I introduced, uh, present today, uh, take all libraries, open issues, contact us, ask if we maybe collaborate on this and share our work and so each person has less work. So thank you very much for attention. So it's time for questions. <laughs> I actually have one. Yeah. Um, because the whole concept with the generators um, is, in my opinion, also uh, a chance to do fast testing in a way. So, yeah. um, as far as I remember, your CI, at least the one in Pico GPU, because mm -hmm. I work mainly with that, does not do fast testing. Um, actually, um, I maintain more or less the generator of the Alpaca CI, mm -hmm. and René is maintaining the Pico GPU CI, and we discussed a lot of concepts, but we are not sharing all, uh, immediately all results. And yesterday I saw there are new pipelines in uh, Pico GPU, and I'm not sure if he already implemented some features, but we have also the idea of doing uh, a weekly more or less full test. So it's saying triggering a job one day, uh, one time in the week, maybe on Wednesday night, where the uh, CI is, is open, and then do a bigger test coverage. And let's say, okay, now we can do tests for eight hours because nobody is waiting. And then, yeah, you get a report in the morning and see, oh, this test combination, which we normally not testing, failed. So we have to fix a bug. Yeah. And you can do also the other side. Great, right. this is already what I introduced with the CI filter because you can manually say, okay, I developed it for the moment only for HIP and maybe only for a specific new version. You say, okay, only test HIP 4.5 and then your CI takes only 10 minutes instead an hour. Mm -hmm. But so have you considered or have you, have you experienced, have you an opinion on saying, for example, if someone opens a pull request and does no special configuration, that the actual matrix that is going to be tested is going to be generated randomly, or is this something that would be beneficial? Or um, actually, the test matrix is yeah, it's generated semi-random. So you have a random generator inside the CI, but we fix the seed for a specific reason because it makes it uh, reproducible. And also, uh, I don't didn't uh, recognize, don't didn't manage it. The generator is part of the Alpaca project, and this means you also pull it with the uh, Git clone, and you can run it offline. And this is the way how you can test the uh, filters, for example, because regex are complicated. So you can really run it uh, locally with the regex and see which jobs will execute in CI. And this is much faster than. Uh, putting first in the comment, push it, and let's see if you did the right way. So you can check it before and then put it in the end of your comment message. And yeah, that's fine. So your answer is that a semi-regular full test is solves the same problem, but less painfully. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, in the end, uh, you need some algorithm. And which helps you to test everything. So first we really wrote only manual written tests and this was really a pain. And yeah, at some point it's actually, this is what I mean, I spend a lot of time. So makes the CI more and more clever. We have also the idea at some point, yeah, let's check if we have a change in the code. If not only build the documentation and skip the CI, if you fix the typo in the documentation and so on. And it would be pretty cool if your drop generator can look the, or can look on the diff and have some logic to check, okay, what you change is affecting something 
So you did a check in the um, HIP code. Maybe it's a good idea to automatically reorder the uh, jobs and first schedule HIP jobs. This would be also good. And also there is no guarantee that this pairwise testing really covers each. So it tries to combine, but actually pairwise means uh, you can also increase the number of test qubits. So at the moment it's two, but you can also say, okay, the combination of three test parameters needs to appear each time. This increases your top amount of jobs really more, but then you can, for example, say, okay, GC10 is working with NBCC12 if you use CMake 318. Mm. This is not covered if you, oh, it's ran, it's some random covered if you have only pairs of two. It is possible, but it's also not possible. But yeah, then you have the problem of the CI runtime. Okay. From most. Um, some questions from the all, uh, online audience. Simon, can I jump in? Yes, you can. Uh, um, 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 one note. So, so um, uh, this this pairwise testing is somehow a trade trade off between really, as, as he said, a full combination where you are really sure everything is working. Uh, uh, each package can be combined with everything, which is uh, legal, uh, and 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 runtime. So the full testing is not possible. And also a drawback is if you add a new version, then you will test uh, compared to the older test another com combination because uh, the new package you add maybe boost or a new compiler will will fully change the, the test matrix but uh, at the end it's uh, not a big problem because what you like to really to see is 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 your clang compiler x working is your uh, gcc compiler x working and with some kind of of, of basic testing and um, all other you can can really uh, tackle maybe with monthly or weekly weekly larger runs and then maybe also exposing the seed could help that uh, what you said uh, maybe you change the combinations by changing the seed but it must be expressed to the user uh, or to, yeah to the user because the user need to be uh, able to reproduce this on a local system or, or need to know which which combination is tested and and uh, if he then fixed something and the next run should definitely test the same if he is not updating uh, the, the, the test metrics else uh, it would be a nightmare uh, to find bugs if you f saw a bug in, in a CI and then you can't reproduce the bug because uh, other combinations get tested. So there you need to take uh, care, but uh, this pairwise testing is helping a lot um, to reduce the load on the, on the shared resource and, and still keep uh, the coverage very, very good. And also one practical problem is uh, we have, luckily we have some CI resources, but in practice, normally we really utilize all the CI resources the whole day and also at the evening. So at the moment, there are not too many hours left where the CI is idling on a day. So full test would be nice, but we have no re real resources for this at the moment. So, yeah, and this is also a reason why I spend why we spend so much work in our job generator because at the moment our major challenge is reducing the uh, CI runtime and not improving the test coverage. Unfortunately, and 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 w one of our next goals is also uh, not use only uh, the the CI resources but uh, uh, be able also to run on, on Himera. This is possible with, with a lot of hacks uh, at the moment, but uh, um, a typical CI is working uh, with Docker containers or maybe, um, um, what's the other name from, of the container? Singularity. Singularity containers. And uh, there's currently no tested workflow on Himera that we can spawn jobs with the Singularity and how it works and that it works with MPI toge uh, together and so on. Because uh, at some point you, you you need more than only combination tests if everything is compiling and, and basic uh, uh, runs on, on a single uh, entity, a single node or single GPU. You maybe need also some uh, uh, verifications that, that, that for example, in, 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 in some projects, the physics is not broken or whatever your, your quantity is for a system integration test. 
uh, and not a simple unit test. Uh, and um, for that, maybe you need more than one GPUs, maybe 10 or something. And we have the resources in the cluster and we could share it, uh, but this uh, needs uh, further development also in the IT uh, department to provide the workflows, uh, how this could be easily integrated with uh, uh, containerized um, uh, environments because you do not like to uh, code your CI scripts for Hemera and then you go, uh, 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 maybe another cluster is coming in, then you need to uh, check if the modules are working and, and, and. Uh, for testing, is, uh, a container version is much better. And also then for the uh, for reproducing everything uh, locally, maybe uh, containers are helping a lot. And one project which is also uh, depending on the Himera runners is implementing uh, regression tests because this is one problem at the moment with the shared resources of the normal runners is that uh, there are many jobs running in parallel on this nodes uh, on this runner so running on the same CPU and you get you cannot benchmark on it because there are so much fluctuation, and this would be cool if you can do it on an exclusive node on Himera. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Okay, if not, um, I finish the talk. Thank you for attention. Um, if you want to uh, discuss it in person, write me email, mothermost, or something else. I would be glad, uh, glad if you are great. If you want to, um, if you want to use the CI and maybe cooperate with us. And yeah, like I mentioned, we need people on the CI, and please come on the CI. I want to get new hardware, and it's much easier if we have some people on it. So thank you very much.